Good Wednesday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3, streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. This morning we're on News Talk 1330's WLBB Facebook page. Encourage you to uh, participate in our conversation with our guest this morning. His name is Nelson Amaya, and, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit how uh, uh, this, this show came about. Obviously, immigration has been a huge discussion uh, on the national level um, in, in Georgia for uh, at least the last couple of years. Um, yeah, more so probably, but, um, you know, just, just having that conversation beat us in the head every day. I, I just wanted to learn more about, um, the, uh, uh, the immigrants that we have in our community. So I reached out to Gila Gonzalez, who is, who is the, I mean, she's like the godmother of, uh, uh Latinos. She's the executive director of, of uh, Latinos United, reached out to her and just talked about my idea for that show, just to uh, bring on some guests that are living in our community to, to get a better uh, idea of uh, what it's like to be here and their experiences and how they got here. And uh, so she uh, sent me a few names. And, and also, if you, if you know Gila, um, if you enjoy radio, I, I don't know if I should be, well, I'll promote another station. She, uh, she is a DJ on Sundays at one of these uh, at a local, I don't know if it's a local radio station, but she does uh, Latin jazz on, uh, on Sunday afternoons for about three hours. And uh, often joke that when people um, when people compliment DJs on their voices, you know, people who who have decent voices allegedly on radio, uh, w- when they meet us, they're always disappointed to find out that we're just these big schleps. But uh, but Gila, great voice on the radio on Sunday, and and uh, not too hard to look at either. But uh, Gila, thank you for helping us set up this program, and I hope that we have to we can bring in several guests based on her suggestions over the the, the next uh, few months. Again, the gentleman I brought on this morning, his name is Nelson Amaya. He's a native of Nicaragua, actually uh, born in the U.S., returned back to Nicaragua. His uh, se- fir- first generation, though, I believe his family yes. was born in Nicaragua when he got here. Introduce us. If I, if I, if I just uh, bump into you uh, and have a conversation with you up the road here, how are you going to introduce yourself to me? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm blessed and uh, honored to be here uh, trying to sharing with you because uh, I know that this show is, you know, is well uh, tolerated. Well to- <laughs> <laughs> tolerated, but it's but it, it, it form, you know. That radio, it's, it's imagination, but also there's a uh, in, to inform, educate, and, um, and help people. So. And I learned this morning, just having a conversation with you, you have a nice little history in radio. And not to mention this building as well. We'll try and intertwine that in our conversation uh, yes, this, awesome. in yes. our 28 minutes that we get to talk this morning. Yes, uh, I, I came out uh, working this building back in those days when uh, Gillis, we started the show that actually she wasn't. And then she came into, uh, on Saturdays, Latinos Unidos uh, of Carrollton. And uh, I, we used to have another show that uh, for First Methodist Church, um, we we called Ondas de Luz, Ways Ways of Light, and uh, we you know I recorded in that studio, and then we we show it on Sunday mornings. Uh, my back my background it's my, well actually let me go back a little bit. My my dad was a broadcaster. He was uh, back in the days when. Uh, they had soap operas and, and a radio, and I used to go in in the re- recording studios. And, you know, I, I am just, and I love, I feel in a radio station studio, and, wow, I feel like home. My brother also lives in Carrollton. He used to work for one of the radio stations in Atlanta, Hispanic radio station. So we are we're involved in, in radio. We picked the right one for the first show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I, well... I was born in the States. My parents moved back home for whatever reason, which I told you about. But anyway, uh, I grew up there. And uh, back in the 1979, where the Sandinistas revolution with the word, with the Somoza, um, I, I decided to move out, you know, to come back to the States because I was a, a teenager then. And, uh, were, you, were you like teenager 13, 14? You're teenager 17, 18? 18. Okay. 17, 18. Right. Still, that's a big decision to make. Yeah, today. yeah. And, uh, well, you know, it was hard because I came by myself with the friends. Mm-hmm. So I had to go to back to school and trying to get lined up my life. We did new country, new, not well, new country, but new language. New, you know, Miami was kind of in between because it was a big city, but also Spanish was uh, the main language there. Mm-hmm. 
I went to college and, you know, I tried to stay lying. And then, you know, I get married and we, we came once to Carrollton. And I wanted to get out of Miami because uh, we had a rough situation there uh, with the drugs, the cartels, you know, back in where Tony Montana was showing. You know, yeah, remember that right. movie? Uh, and we decided to come to Carrollton. But and I got yeah. How did you get? How did you come across Carrollton? Is it as simple as throwing a dart on the? No, on the actually, border? actually, you know, we have a, my mother-in-law had some relatives and family that Samson the Baldisons. Everybody knows him. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother-in-law was related to the grandma, and actually, it was her aunt. And uh, we came to visit. She came visit, and she fell in love. And then in the, in the spring, the next year, we came, and then my wife said, hey, <laughs> I love this. We, you, I stay, you go back and pack. <laughs> and we're still here since 1990. Since 1990. 19, yeah, since yeah. 1990, yeah. 1990. That, that, that's longer than, uh, well, longer than I've been here, longer than Josh has been here, longer than Joel's been here. I don't think Josh, Joel was even born in 1990. But, uh, yeah, no? no you were, yeah, yeah, okay, Joel was one in 1990. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my guest this morning. Is, my, my daughter, actually, my, I got... I had three kids. Mom, two of them were born in Miami. One, my last one, Laura, if she's listening. I love you, baby. Uh, she was born in Carrollton in uh, 1990. 1990. Is she still here? Still in Carrollton? Yeah. Hill County? Yeah. yeah. She lives in Villa Rica. You know, if you do have family still in Nicaragua, they could. I think they could watch us right now and listen to us. Yes, on, yes. On, in on, fact, I got, some, some, hopefully I got some. Yeah, I'm going to hopefully have some friends and... Hi, everybody. Yeah, very cool. Hopefully, maybe they'll check in on the uh, Facebook, and we'll give a big shout-out uh, af- after one of our breaks. Um, you, you know, and, I, and I'm interested, since, since 1990, you, you've been in Carroll County. Uh, do you have experiences that have, that, that have stuck with you that are, that are positive? And, and I do worry that there could have been negative experiences, too, just based on, just based on ignorance. I mean, that you've uh, had, you've actually, had to deal with. I mean, were you prepared for any of those? Actually, you know, I always say it. A lot of people talk about uh, being rejected because you're Hispanic or Latin American, mm-hmm. but uh, or or you know feel. Uh, but you know, I never felt that. I I was sure who I am. I'm I'm you know, and I'm not gonna. It's 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 hard because I know as people that you got different mentalities and thinking Latinos are bad. But I think all the people, everybody, it, it's, it's good and bad in every culture, every people. Every, and I never felt like that. I, I don't have no really bad experiences, really. And you've seen you've seen Carroll County and Carrollton grow. I mean, to be here oh, since yes. 1990, I've only been aware of Carrollton probably since ni- in uh, 2007, and I've seen seen growth. But, yeah, well, since 1990, you've seen significant growth, yeah. no doubt. Yes, yes. Uh, I remember, you know, I was, as I mentioned before, back, you know, the main p- place where people hang out, it was at first Tuesday Mall. And all the kids driving around, the movie theaters were there, ice cream, got a Wendy's. And, and, and that was the main, you know, I asked one, where, I asked one um, a co-worker, where's people would have fun? I said, oh, we go to the mall. And I looked at it, you know, it's just it, kids gathering Tail, uh, like, like a tailgate party, you know, but it, that was it. We had the lazy donkey, <laughs> which Roberto and uh, Rivera. And so the lazy Orlando. donkey's been around here that long? Oh, yes. Has it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, La Fiesta, then the other jalapeno was uh, where La Fiesta is. If there was, if there was a, a restaurant, if you were to open up a restaurant uh, based on Nicaraguan food, Nicaragua, Nicaraguan yeah, Nicaragua. food, food what, what, would, uh, what would that serve? Well, actually, my brother had the first uh, Central American restaurant in Carrollton, um, late 90s, mid 90s. And uh, we call it Fritanga. Fritanga, it's where you have a lot of fry. Uh, Gallo Pinto, which is rice and beans. Yeah, so that was, uh, the, so that was the national or the uh, the national. Yes, yes, yes. The Gallo Pinto. It's well, we're Nicaraguans are known for the Gallo Pinto, which is um, or signature, <laughs> uh, like fried pine plantain, fried cheese. You got to taste that. Oh, I'm all about the fried cheese. It's, oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, fried cheese, uh, enchiladas. You know, all the and then he had a 
restaurant in Colombia Drive, which was the first. And then, you know, we got different uh, from Honduras, which is, I think, the largest community in Carrollton, because a lot of people from Honduras in, in, in town. And you said in the 80s or 90s, the Nicaraguan community, I mean, they, were, they were the... Yes, the, the first, the main community back then was the, the big family. It was, uh, everybody was related somehow. Baldison, Perez Casar, uh, uh, Samson, Ortegas, uh, Dr. Ortega, um, uh, Gonzalez, Gila, Gila's brother mm-hmm. was here. So Gila moved uh, back and uh, actually she moved in 90, 1990 also, 91, somewhere in there. So, you know, we were a big, big family. Everybody was related somehow. And uh, it was a large community. My guest this morning, Nelson Amaya, um, he's a, uh, I, I've got native of Nicaragua here on my cheat sheet, but no, he was born in the U.S., went back to Nicaragua, came back uh, to uh, America, and has been in Carroll County, in Carrollton, since, uh, since early 1990s, if not 1990. My guest on this morning's Community Voice program, time right now is 841. If you want to participate in this conversation, just edumacating all of us a little bit, uh, me especially, um, you can join in here. Uh, Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. The Entrepreneur Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined curriculum-based track to acquire essential knowledge and skills for success in business and leadership. Critical areas include identifying entrepreneurial characteristics, selecting a value position, and business model development. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Forty-three. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice. My name is Colin Worthington. My guest this morning, Nelson Amaya. He is uh, a native of Carroll County, or I'm sorry, native of the U.S. Been in Carroll County since 1990. Uh, first generation in America's family. Uh, family uh, still back in Nicaragua. How, how, what's the difference in communicating with them in 1990? Uh, you know, when you got here and uh, in Miami, and and then came to Carroll County compared to today, compared to how easy it should be today. Well, actually, it's sky high difference. Uh, back then, you know, you used to make a phone call, and I remember that the companies that with the long distance charges were like a, oh, yeah it was a killer you know like a dollar two dollars a minute they call bill Arica, probably like in the 90s it, you, was actually long. actually <laughs> w- w- uh, having a cell phone if you were from villarica um i-20 getting off the exit you were roaming and there was a charge <laughs> you remember those days right yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. roaming and charges and the phones and, were this big. oh yeah the, yeah but i used to call home um every once in a while you know but but the phone bills was kind of high yeah yeah. Very high, like a dollar, two dollars a minute, depending on. Did but, you write a lot of letters, and do, do, do you yeah, still write yeah. letters? Actually, you know, technology came to get closer, mm-hmm. but on the other hand, it separates people. But well, let's get, get to the positive. Now, with a click, you're with a text, with the WhatsApp, you're WhatsApp, yeah, right there. So it makes it a lot easier. People get more, you know. Uh, in fact, uh, we have like a, a friends, like high school friends, that uh, we have the groups. Everybody's communicating, oh, so it's it brought us to get together. Do you? Uh, what do you miss most about Nicaragua? Uh, it's hard to say. I'm not saying I don't miss any, but uh, but this is home. Mm-hmm. And my mother, my mother, my sure. brother lives there. So that's, you know, that's out of question. Are there any traditions or anything that you've brought here that you make sure you still I mean, pay tribute to or experience, make sure your family experiences it? Yeah, yeah. We might, actually, my kids, my grandkids, um, they all, 
no. In fact, um, my son, my kids, we're planning to bring their own kids home to Nicaragua to see, to show them what's the life there, when I, where I grew up, and I, what we did, what, you know. So the Ruth, we want to keep the Ruth and traditions and the family, you know, his, history. Um, probably go to station where my dad used to work. I mean, stuff like that. But we want to keep their, they need to know where they come from. And what are you part of now? You mentioned, you told me that you're, uh, you're a pastor. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, in fact, you know, like I said, I mentioned before, we, on this radio station, we used to have a program that, that weighs uh, weight of light, which is Ondas de Luz. And uh, we pastoring First United, I mean, First Methodist, Carrollton First Methodist Church. Back then, uh, we had a pastor that I used to assist back in 92, 93, 94. That's when we had the the programs, the show. And, and you did, I did ask you, you, you thought about it for a second, did ask you if the, the, the carpet on that, on the wall in that room there is the same, <laughs> well, and you you weren't sure at first, but you kind of believe it could yeah, be. Yes, yes. And this it, is it pre-Steve Gratic even, I think, from 1990, I'm, I'm sure. Yes, it is. Actually, it is, because, you know, you can tell that, the design and the, the texture of the carpet. Yeah. I mean, there's no... You and the color. That You're not finding that and color any place No, no. Else. Actually, but... Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, I see a lot of renovations. It and, is a museum, as we like to call it. That's well, why we bring in these older things oh, like this I old saw typewriter. It in, uh, from, you know, I remember my dad just writing all the... And, and it wasn't like this, but that's what we used or they used in the days. Yeah, and we've got, we got old radios out there up front, too. And old, I saw old that switches. console, yeah. you know. We need to charge uh, for people to yeah, come in from yeah. now, uh, now. Uh, Nelson Amaya is my guest on this morning's Community Voice program. Uh, when I think of Nicaragua, among the top things I'll think about, and just maybe based on an article I read or even a book or something, is volcanoes. Are they, are they, are yes. they prevalent? I mean, are they like over, all over the place? Do you? Oh, no, yes. Yeah. That's, that's what they call the Nicaraguan is the land of lake and volcanoes. volcanoes yeah. Um, they're actually they're active, a couple of active volcanoes that you can see. You see that the 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 fire, the actual crater. Um, I mean, and, those things you just you just become comfortable with having that. Uh, you know. Well, the, you know, you for a minute you feel like you know you're in the border of that crater, uh, and you feel like oh, what what if <laughs> this. But you can yeah, you can smell it. You can feel you feel it different, and, and there's a, there's something in there that captivate that your curiosity. What's downstairs? And Spanish is the predominant language, but there's um, on the east coast maybe there's an indigenous. Uh, yeah, on the east and, coast there's a Creole uh, community. The well, actually, that was a British colony, uh, colony on that area. So they speak English, but but uh, it, the accent is different. They don't have British accents. <laughs> Some British makes me yeah. yeah yeah. Well, it's colonized by uh, by British. America as well, right? Isn't it? The only... um, no, I, well, British was more more. The, you know, yeah. No. We uh, before we do take a break. Um, sports. Uh, are you able to keep up with sports? Oh yes. Well, I mean, okay, let's let's compare it again back to 1990 to how you were able to keep up with sports. Um, to now, and do you take full advantage of that? Are you still excited about the sports back in the yes. to keep up? Yes, I remember back uh, nineteen. I think it was the nineteen seventy six where uh, Dennis Martinez, which is the El Presidente, El Presidente. Uh, it was called in a game back in you know September somewhere. I think it was in September. We had the big first you know page of the prensa, which is the the newspaper. Uh, he made it to the big circus. And that was a big deal then. And then, but but that was a few days, uh, maybe a week later. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah <laughs> so you know, for us, it was oh, well, it happened yesterday or this. no, but it happens a week, like a week before. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the news were. Do you remember that? I know the technology, and compared to going to my dad's, um, where my dad worked, they used to call it teletype. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, you remember that? I, it was, I remember it, was it a, happened. I don't. I don't it, believe it was yeah, a it huge didn't work box. When that was going on. It was yeah. a huge box, yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, the teletype. Uh, so they send uh, the international uh, news in there. 
sometimes it was it took time to heat it up, you know. And I was always on because news were supposed to be quick. So they wait to get those news by teletype or phone calls, but phone calls were impossible for it was, I mean and um in the other sports it was Alexis Arguello, the one of the greatest uh, boxers that we that we had in Nicaragua. But Dennis Martinez, uh when, when I remember we I used to follow the big leagues when I was since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometimes they show uh um on T V and sometimes they were listen to like this teletype and uh, the the radio broadcasters were reading that one out three outs but they were making the game on their heads and people were like i said radio is an imagination some people might be imagining great good looking guys here <laughs> and they're not incorrect <laughs> they're not wrong <laughs> but, but, but but you know that the, the, the broadcaster will say oh there's two out uh the coach make the signs and blah 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 and right. then and they would i mean i think about i mean just you know reading stories from like the 1920s when they when they fake it on radio and it, it may be the same thing you're alluding to it was to. the same it's like right where they, they, they would clunk a desk or something to make it sound like the ball yeah. was hit or, or they, they have a like fake a fake crowd i remember that little little pieces of wood and then sounds like oh there's a hit there's yeah. a high ball going back and deep in the left field and the ball is gone yeah. <laughs> you know but and, and but they just up, hear yeah. they just hear a home run or or you know <laughs> but that's how it works Nelson Amaya is my guest on this morning's Community Voice program. Again, we're on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page, and I hope that uh, I hope that his friends and family that uh, are able to tune in this morning, and maybe I'll, I'll take a peek here and see if they've uh, if they've commented during this break. Otherwise, they'll get to see it this afternoon because we know that Facebook kind of does strain uh, um, our Facebook programming since we won't buy advertising. We'll come back after this with about uh, six minutes. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating over 61 years. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us on the mountain to see our mission and vision in action. Academic excellence, a faith-based environment, and dynamic opportunities are just a few of the reasons our families choose Oak Mountain Academy. Academic scholarships and tuition assistance are available. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Eight five four. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program. My name is Colin Worthington. My guest is uh, Nelson Amaya. Uh, we do have Gila. Gila did check in, and she oh. did say uh, the tradition of close family. The Amaya family is exemplary on this too. And, oh, thank you, Gila. And, and I do feel that. I mean, I, I feel that way when, when I look at the uh, Latin community. When I look at their families. When I look in this community, you know, living here and elsewhere, I do feel like the, their, their families are, are very very close. And I don't necessarily mean living together in the same neighborhood or things like that. But I. I just feel like there's, a, and it could just be this time, you know, the, we, we talked about uh, the, uh, the stories we had with the Irish communities and Italian communities coming to America right. in the early 1900s, how you know, they all were together and they tried to keep their traditions close. But I do feel that about uh, yeah. the, the communities. You know, the, the segregation is, is part of a, the, the human life and, and, and uh, different communities get together, especially when uh, necessities are arise, you know. One of the things that uh, I do want to mention is that America, but Carrollton, uh, I, I see the growth in every way, uh, structural, um, but the community has still enlarged. For many people, many com countries are represented here. From South America, before it was the few Nicaragu Nicaragu Mexican Nicaraguans, a few Honduras, a uh, couple Colombians that I met, but now it's you find people from everywhere, 
And uh, I call these like for so many because as you see the growth on the, on the churches, um, in I think call this the promised land because not only because uh, the people find a way, better way to, um, of life, working and hard work. There's, there's a lot of hardworking people here. But when you come to Carrollton, a lot of people can, came to meet Jesus. And this in the spiritual part, in the immigration, if you have good, truly Christians, you're going to have people out of trouble. And that's what we want. People stay out of trouble, making, you know, committing something illegal, going drug dealers and stuff like that, that, you know, when new people come to a community that's uh, strongly believers, that change lives and get people out of the bad, 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 um, out of the bad doing, let's, let's say that. You, uh, your experiences here, your time here, is it, do you think that's encouraged for other friends and family to want to come over? Yes, yeah. certainly. That's that we make an uh, open invitation, you know, because uh, the God, God is is making these people, th- this town. I remember back in those days, and you used to come in those from Georgia and F- North Florida to Tennessee, maybe Carolinas. You could not buy alcohol on Sundays. And I was wondering why. And it, it was because of the power of the, you know, a lot of churches were pushing. And then the other, on the other hand, they came to vote and people vote for, yes, selling alcohol on Sundays. Because it was dedicated to God. Now you can, but a lot of people still, you know, this is a church. You have, you know how many churches are in this town? Are in Carrollton or Carroll County itself? Carroll County. Oh, and, and there, yeah, there's, there's going to be 20 others that don't get the attention the other ones do. I'm going to say um, that, that are actually active. 74. I think uh, last census I heard, it was like a 300 or something. Oh, no kid. Wow. Wow. I'm not, and that, that might be, I'm not, not be accurate, but, but there was a lot of churches. I mean, 300 churches in one small area, it's a lot. And what's it take to get somebody to go to a specific church? I mean, we talk about, I mean, you, you have uh, you have your service, yes. and it streams as well. We should yes. give a big shout yes. out about that. That, 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 that streams. You know, what, what's going to encourage somebody, um, you know, an immigrant that comes here? What are they going to look for in a church? We, we, we are, you know, an uh, open church uh, that uh, we just preach the gospel, the, 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 tru- the truth and the light of Jesus. Uh, and that, you know, we try to get involved with the community needs. Uh, in fact, we're going to have a health clinic uh, on on the June 22nd. So, you know, there's a lot of needs on people that need health, spiritual. But, you know, we want to get the health, life, physical health, but also spiritual health. And yep. that you can only give me take, uh, getting by Jesus Christ. Nelson, you're very cool. And uh, I'm well, glad to meet you. Very happy to meet you. Oh, glad it's you my came pleasure. out this morning. I'm glad you talked to us. And I hope that I improve uh, my technique in, in these interviews as we do um, uh, uh, talk to uh, more community members here in the next few months. Uh, but again, thank you. Thank you for sticking out to be the first one. Oh, oh yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for having me. And thank you for listening and watching for this morning's Community Voice program. Tomorrow, we're going to talk with some residents of Villa Rica and uh, the mayor and uh, city councilwoman. I think you'll want to tune into that program uh, at 830 here on Community Voice. Time right now is 9 o'clock. We will catch you tomorrow.